Hi, and welcome to Mark That Talk series. We're in conversation with No Yung Sui Fu, Chinese born, New York based, new media artist, curator, and assistant arts professor at the Department of the Photography and Imaging Institute of Emerging Technology at Tisch School of the Arts at New York University. In these talks, Snow is taking us through a solo show, Liminality Liminoid, which opened in New York in Manhattan's Chinatown during March 2020. Enjoy the talk and the virtual exhibition tour. Hey. Hi. Hey, hello. We're connected. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. It's, um, it's really nice to have you on, on this live chat. Oh, it's my pleasure. I really have been looking forward to it. Great. Um, yeah, so we're here this afternoon uh, with Snow. And um, I, I found your work, your artwork through Instagram. And I was really fascinated about um, your current exhibition. I really love the concept. Um, so yes, I got in touch because I was really keen on talking to you and exploring about your art and, uh, and your background. So I, I would love to learn more about your experience as an artist and also your journey and, uh, and how, you, how you got here and how you got started in creating digital art. For sure. Thanks so much for inviting me to do the talk. Uh, I've been following your uh, it's been very stimulating, especially through this uh, special time that we're all, all facing right now. So I'm happy yeah. to take part in it. And I also love that you uh, did find me uh, through Instagram, through an online platform. Uh, and uh, since I do call myself a digital or new media artist, uh, that um, that means a lot that, you know, um, my work can be seen um, you know, outside of my immediate physical uh, space and uh, mm -hmm. um, so I actually um, so I'm actually right now based in New York uh, mm -hmm. um, and I actually also didn't start from digital art um, I started in an artist family um, with painting uh, so uh, I, I was originally born in China and uh, you know studied painting um, growing up and uh, it wasn't until later on in my um, higher education that I started to get into uh, new media and um, I still think of myself many uh, ways as a painter uh, except that my rules of uh, painting or making art in general is not really the traditional brush anymore but I actually find a lot of similarity uh, in a way that maybe approach digital space uh, to you know the way that a more traditional media has been used uh, mm -hmm. for us to reflect and think. And, and uh, right now I'm in New York and I am also uh, a assistant arts professor at the New York University Department of uh, Photography and Imaging. So uh, I teach uh, 3D CG imaging technology to artists who want to utilize it to artwork. So I teach what I practice. Uh, and uh, and yeah, um, um, so recently like, I have a solo show uh, that is actually currently up uh, in a space called Multi Space New York City. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, because of the coronavirus, um, uh, the physical space is now closed. Uh, but I'm really grateful of this opportunity where I can still talk about this show uh, in the online online platform here with you and. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll just uh, uh, add on one, one last thing. I, I felt like, um, you know, the a lot of things that I've been interested in talking about, uh, this idea of uh, the minality in the mind, uh, is actually a bit more relevant right now. Yeah, it's not absolutely, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Not with the way we're using the internet, it really become a necessity. So, so yeah, very, very excited be able to talk to you and you know the audiences here about that today too so yeah that was um that was really fascinating when i came across your show and i was reading the press release i really got interested about 
what you define through the works as these um, way of entering uh, into a new dimension and that art in a, way, in a way is the medium that takes you, you know, onto that threshold that is the reality and the virtual. Um, so I was really interested, and as you said, especially around these times that we're living in this limbo, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to be on the other side once we get out of this, um, how we'll become after, um, what is this is going to do to us, you know, to our soul, to our mind. Um, and in a way, your show was really, really relevant to to the present times. Um, so I, I suppose we can just start by uh, going through the actual show. So for everyone, for, for the people watching today, we're going to try and get you into, you know, a virtual show and uh, take you around. So maybe then we can stop throughout the visit, the virtual tour, and explain a bit about the works that we're going to see and have a little conversation about it. Um, do you want to give some background about how you got um, um, around the idea of the show? For sure, for sure. Yeah, uh, so I'm actually going to uh, sort of like, um, so I know later on you will be showing a, uh, documentation of, of the, the, the show of mine, so that I can talk through it. Uh, before we do that, we have a, a, a little treat here for a virtual, virtual showing my, uh, my show. So, uh, you oh, fantastic. see, uh, my screen in front, and this is actually a, a 3D model I've made for the show. Um, and, uh, so I'll let it play while I kind of give this little introduction. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, uh, the show's title is called Liminality Liminoid. Um, and I think, uh, you know, as an artist, I've been, uh, interested in this idea of digital space for uh, quite a while. And this solo show it comes, uh, together, uh, was this really, you know, really opportunity to kind of able to put, uh, a lot of my work together. There are about 20 in this show all together. Um, you're looking at uh, the ground floor of the space, it's the way, uh, both sides of the wall. Um, so you're seeing uh, kind of how this uh, corridor-like space is uh, kind of from like a, a transparent wall right from the outside. So you can see uh, here there is a uh, projection, there is monitor display, uh, there are two VR work. Um, and so as you uh, go uh, into this corridor, you're encountered with all of the different, um, you know, kind of uh, works. And, uh, you know, the idea of, you know, liminal uh, and liminoid, uh, mm -hmm. very essential ideas relating to the selection of the artwork here. Uh, you know, liminal is anything that is in between, right? So um, mm -hmm. I think that, uh, I think internet space is a really good example of a liminal space uh, because it's neither uh, the physical space nor uh, the mental space. It's kind of something in between, right? Um, mm -hmm. and other concept is uh, liminoid, and it is a term that is borrowed by, uh, from Victor Turner um, and, uh, uh, Liminoid is more about play, right? So while um, limino is kind of like reality, liminoid is young reality. So uh, I like to see uh, kind of the VR space as a liminoid space uh, because in VR, even though everything seems to be familiar, uh, you have you know your uh, three dimensional perception, you have sound. Um, but, uh, you know, there is no real danger when you're inside of a VR space. Uh, it mm -hmm. reflects the human experience, but it is um, another thing, right? So uh, when you are in the uh, liminoid space, uh, such as a VR, VR space, uh, it's, um, yeah, there is more experimentation that can happen. But that experience uh, really actually help us to think about, um, you know, the, the more natural experience, right? I'm, I'm kind of throwing out some of the terms uh, that I think it might be interesting to also um, do exercise of, uh, of sort of like uh, uh, coining them down, right? Because um, I think that 
term itself can be very different uh, to people too. So, so yeah, so my artwork kind of in general um, has to do about this uh, kind of internal reflectivity. Uh, it has to do about uh, specifically using CG uh, computer graphic imaging method uh, to think about the way that our world is being represented, right? Especially when simulation technology is being so advanced in the recent decades or so uh, that now we can even do uh, photorealistic rendering. Uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, me and other artists are also using uh, this imaging technology to, uh, you know, uh, talk about human emotion, talk about human experience, right? So. Mm -hmm. A little bit more abstract. So, how does one sort of relate to such a complex world, uh, both in physical sense and both in imaging sense, right? So, um, that is also where the idea of the techno sublime come in, which is uh, also uh, throughout all of the artwork in my show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah, I I extremely like this concept. Um, also about the social action, you know. In uh, I was just um, reading through the the press release again, and I really liked Tur Turner's observation that goes like: if liminality is regarded as a time and place of withdrawal from normal modes of social action, it potentially can be seen as a period of scrutiny for central values and axioms. So, you know, it's something that we see as a value and we um, living in society, you um, perceive what we do as something that has always been done that way and everyone goes through it as a form of ritual. Um, and most people don't even question the why. Um, it is something that is part of your life, it's part of your culture, and you just, you know, do it. Um, whether in this show you actually question what you are before this ritual and what you become after the ritual. Um, but in this sense, I also like the fact that uh, you take this as a, as within a play form um, so that it doesn't feel so um, constructed in a way but you have a role within that threshold so when you are going through that time that space you have a role an active role so you as a viewer you interact with the work of art so you're not just absorbing it in a way that uh, comparing it to life you know to the rituals of life of life uh, you just go through it and because uh, that's what most people have accepted for many years and then uh, what in your show you actually question that so I'll be curious to see how you managed to achieve such experience and what was the audience response um, so perhaps we can start by going through the show and if anyone watching has questions please do send them through um, we will be talking, discussing any questions you may have. Uh, we had a couple actually coming through already, so maybe we can touch upon those before uh, moving on to the virtual show. So we've got Eleonora here asking if you think the virtual space uh, is not so dangerous. Um, and then Elahra asking, um, any chance we can hide comments and open up after presentation? Maybe, I don't know how to do it actually. I don't know if anyone does, um, but otherwise I can, I can use my top screen and show the, um, the exhibition on my top screen so that you don't get the comments and then you, you can actually talk through the, the show. But yeah, do you, have a, do you have an answer for Eleonora? About the uh, virtual space and do you think if the virtual space is any dangerous? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that is a really good concept, except uh, it's especially relating to the idea of the sublime, right? Um, and, uh, uh, you know, in a way, um, I immediately think about the VR space. Uh, so one of my VR work in there, uh, there's actually a couple of things where the space feels either really, really tall, uh, or, you know, it's kind of like vertical, really, really deep. Uh, so while you're 
VR uh, headset, uh, you may have the illusion that uh, you're going to fall off this cliff. But mm. in reality, you're not, right? Because you're still standing on uh, the stable ground that is in this exhibition space. And so in that sense, um, I think, you know, the, the concept of nemonoid is this playful uh, kind of concept that there is uh, not really the real uh, uh, sort of danger at hand. Um, however, I think, you know, the concept of danger um, is really interesting, uh, you know, thinking about, um, you know, uh, when, we, uh, when we encounter nature, uh, we, you know, we are this sort of like uh, mortal being, we have our physicality, we have our size and, and such. When we encounter, uh, say, you know, mountains or ocean, uh, we feel that danger, right? Uh, because it's like, oh, I'm so small compared to the rest of the mountain range and I can just fall off or I can drown. Um, so I use digital space as a way to reflect that, right? So that's, that's mm -hmm. what the, like techno sublime, um, you know, comes in very relevantly. However, there is a certain other kind of danger I think it is involved uh, with digital space. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, a couple of things that I maybe can just uh, briefly talk about um, uh, before we, we go into the, the video. Um, you know, I think there is a certain sort of uh, danger um, because the way that we uh, utilize images nowadays on the online space is so uh, such a crucial part of our everyday life, the way that we perceive, right, the ritual that uh, Serena kind of talked about. Um, so sometimes I think one of the danger is that we take those rituals that is, you know, online uh, as reality, right? We kind of make mm -hmm. this very flattened representation um, you know, as the way it is. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, so very soon we realized, oh, everybody's uh, reality online is actually not the same, right? So, you know, whatever you're experiencing through your little device right now is actually still only just another version of, you know, a perception of the world uh, versus what the world, world really is like. Um, and, 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 then, and then the second danger I was thinking about sort of relating to that uh, is the way that we relate to each other, right? Like uh, sometimes we think that the digital space, people don't actually get hurt if you say very hurtful thing, but that's mm -hmm. not because there is actually a very uh, solid connection back to the physical space. So I think there are there are real danger, uh, but I think the the term terminology of danger is also uh, sort of um, uh, yeah I think it's pushed right within within digital space. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think that answers really well. And uh, she also um, carried on commenting saying about the danger of going back to reality, for instance, which is, of course, another way of switching to a different dimension, you know? Mm -hmm. Totally. Okay, so if everyone's happy, we're going to uh, do a virtual tour of, uh, of your show. So I'm just going to be turning my screen, so um, that way we can start browsing through. Um, stop me whenever you feel you want to comment or um, you want to talk about one specific work a bit more in details and then I'm just going to stop. But I'm going to show it on my screen so that is bigger um, and it should, should be okay. Let me know how it looks. Okay. So, yeah, feel free to play it. Um, I think the whole uh, documentation is about 10 minutes. So, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll let you know when I need to pause it. Uh, I'm really glad that I got this documentation right before uh, New York City basically just shut down. Uh, so, so that, you know, we can actually do this virtual tour right now. Um, and, you know, I like that not only 3D, but also video and photography can kind of bring us into that virtual space through the screen. So, uh, so starting out, you're looking at the entry point uh, of the uh, of the show, and I started out with the four uh, piece that is uh, all made from uh, NASA imagery that I have uh, downloaded online. Um, so we can pause a little bit here. I can just mm -hmm. talk briefly about about them. So um, so the couple work that you're looking at right now, um, so they 
both are originated from uh, galaxy uh, simulation, right? So as a way that uh, a lot of those NASA uh, imagery comes together, it has to do with data. And, uh, you know, many, are, my, many sci scientists, excuse me, have to work together on that. Mm -hmm. They came up with this usually beautifully colored image for us to see and then have a, you know, sense of understanding, oh, you know, that is what Milky Way look like. Uh, that is what, uh, you know, the Earth look like. Um, so I was really interested in this sort of notion of a, you know, rectangular image uh, represents such a big idea, right? Such as a uh, galaxy, outer space, um, um, you know, environments. And so, so all of the four work, uh, you know, deal with that. So one has to do with uh, the images of the sun. Uh, one has to do with images of the earth. Um, and then other ones are the black hole and also the uh, images of the galaxies. So you can hit play again uh, as it continues to move in. Uh, and I will also say, right, like with uh, digital media and virtual tour, there's a little bit limitation uh, some of you might be thinking that you want to see it, you know, more up close. Uh, I actually have been intentionally to make all of my artwork uh, available online. And so feel free to check out a lot of the artwork there as well after today's tour. Um, so, uh, so, you know, we, we enter into this space uh, thinking about the universe uh, with the imageries that we're seeing of the Earth, of the galaxy. Um, and then so as we uh, sort of further going into the space, uh, and there is actually um, uh, small space. Uh, rooms uh, I am doing projections in. Um, so I will also make a little note about this uh, specificity of the space. So uh, it is called the Multispace New York City. And they're actually a alternative pop-up space uh, that is run by broker company in uh, New York. Uh, and then what they do is that they invite artists to come into their space and then um, the artists can then put up show to uh, show together. And uh, so, so the the ground floor is actually about 2,000 square uh, foot, uh, which is a solution of mine. And uh, besides being a, a presenting artist, I actually also uh, invited two other artists, uh, both uh, on the second floor and the bottom floor, uh, to also showcase their work. Uh, so uh, we're not going to talk about that today very much uh, because I want to talk uh, more specifically about the solo show. Uh, but, you know, I want, want you guys to be able uh, to know that uh, as well. And so we can continue play this, uh, the video. And, um, and then so uh, moving in uh, into the corridor space, uh, they're kind of more like cave structure, uh, the way that, you know, the projections are, you know, being put upon the wall and, uh, you know, the audience, as you go in, uh, you can, you know, go into the space and, you know, sometimes your shadow might uh, block uh, the projection. And so uh, it really relates to uh, one of the main concepts, again, in uh, the show is the Plato's Cave, right? Uh, so uh, all of the images that you're seeing here uh, are made by me in uh, CG. So uh, the second part of the work are all about human body, right? So just as a way that we think of uh, the galaxy images, uh, you know, how does one image sort of contain such a complex idea in a big space? Uh, I'm also bringing attention to the way that each of us uh, as human beings are also super complex, uh, you know, not only uh, psychologically, but also just physically, right? Like uh, I've been reading a lot of news, reading even uh, you know, about the virus uh, and trying to understand more of the way that uh, our immune system work. And it really always amazes me, right? So, um, so in my animation, I uh, uh, sort of deconstruct the human figure and, um, and then they move, right? So uh, one of them are, uh, are sort of uh, degrading and some of them are, are changing. Um, so I'm, you know, really uh, asking my audience to do well, uh, kind of on the complexity, right? On the uh, infinite nature of uh, human as well. Um, and, uh, and a lot of the simulation you are seeing is liquid fluid simulation. Um, and uh, uh, water actually is uh, also another content that go throughout uh, the whole um, 
exhibition um, and I also love uh, materially how much you know of us this physical body is made out of water right which really relates to uh, our environment and uh, we, we live in and some of the other other work actually also talk about that um, so this is a third piece uh, of the body series the body liquid series and this one I actually projected on the ground right so mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I'm also uh, and challenging the way that we're looking at those images. And when uh, the piece is projected on the ground, it actually illuminates the whole room, right? So, uh, so it actually becomes this almost 3D uh, imaging um, experience. Uh, so it reflects onto the wall, reflects onto uh, like the ceiling, and uh, which which actually relates to uh, the room right next to it, as you will, you will see, uh, which is a, a room that I dedicated for VR. Um, so there's a little chair that people can sit down um, and then you can wear the headset and then completely actually immersed into this 360 uh, you know, degree of image. Um, and so this piece is called Karst. Uh, it's one of the uh, VR piece that I put in the show. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, in a relationship to some of the other artwork that you're, you're seeing here, you know, Karst is, um, is to put you right in the middle, right, of this digital space uh, that is a VR space. Uh, and some of the prints uh, from Karst is uh, put up on the wall and, um, and then um, here is an excerpt of somebody playing the piece, uh, actually. So within Karst, uh, there are three things. One is uh, a, a Karst cave, uh, which I modeled after uh, a cave uh, from southwest part of China, where I'm from. And uh, the other two, one is a glacier thing, and then the other one is a hard chamber thing. thing. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that um, too. Uh, but what you're looking at right now uh, is a hallway projection of my second VR piece. And so this um, projection, uh, this piece is called trench. Uh, so I have cars and I have trench. And so trench is modeled after uh, ocean trench, uh, where uh, I brought you down deep into the ocean. Um, and uh, and then beside the besides the projection uh, on the wall, trench is actually also projected on the glass. So you kind of see this almost multi layers of projection uh, on some transparency, uh, but also kind of behind on the wall. And then through, uh, the glass, you can also see what's going on behind the scene, right? So you're seeing right now some uh, audiences, uh, they kind of become part of the image as well. Uh, before we go into, this is uh, one of the final uh, room of the space. And uh, so I have implemented this 360 degree uh, projection within the last uh, space. And so that you're really walking, you know, into the space, uh, you know, one of the kind of concept, the, the, the mythology in Plato's cave uh, allegory is, you know, people kind of mistaken this flattened image uh, in that case is a, uh, you know, shadow as what reality really is, right? So, um, so I'm inviting you into kind of this flattened space uh, where, you know, you're bombarded by this, you know, trench uh, environment and, uh, and um, the the monitors uh, on the left, as you see, is actually uh, uh, screen recordings from cars, right? So the first uh, VRP. So so they they also kind of spatially have this kind of complex relationship that one is kind of in the middle of the other, right? So um, I didn't want this to be linear, um, you know, though. Uh, CG imaging technology oftentimes are still used in mainstream to make linear narrative. Um, but, you know, uh, my work has always been about experiencing the image with your body, right? Um, as human beings, we're not only just eyes and ears, uh, we're actually also experiencing through our body, through, uh, you know, uh, other different senses. And so as you walk into this 360 uh, projection room, um, you know, you're, you're very much kind of hugged, right, by uh, this image. Uh, and then I put the last uh, VR hazard in the end of the room. So uh, that's kind of the finale of the show uh, where one can, you know, sit down onto the chair and then uh, put on the uh, hazard. So then 360 degree, you again can experience uh, this uh, 
ocean. Um, and some of the image that you see in the projection, uh, you you actually uh, be seeing in the VR piece. Um, so it starts actually with really beautiful kind of coral reef like object. But as you go in, uh, some events start to happen. Um, and also the objects start to change. Uh, you're bombarded with actually a lot of trash object uh, with glitch texture. And when you are getting close to some of them in the VR headset, um, the whole uh, you know view of the 360 image in the VR start to shift, right? So uh, it, it does become a little bit of intense for some people when they experience it, but it is uh, to bring in this kind of attention of you know the way that uh, we influence our environment also uh, coming back and influences us, right? So there is this kind of real emotional uh, uh, distur uh, disturbedness <laughs> that mm -hmm. is uh, introduced in uh, the trench piece, which actually relates to one of the earlier questions about danger, right? Like I think, you know, the concept of sublime, uh, one aspect of it is about the beauty. Uh, we are, uh, I think, you know, when we, when we look out, uh, we are, uh, oftentimes so in awe just with how, uh, you know, our earth uh, actually is, right? And uh, the beauty of even just a piece of leaf. Um, but then there is also sort of the aspect of danger oftentimes, you know, in, this, in the concept of the sublime is that, uh, you know, we're so small uh, and so limited compared to that. And so, you know, uh, even uh, with my karst piece as we're kind of, so the, 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 uh, what you're seeing is the uh, video is going back into the space again, right? So we're, we're walking out right now. Um, so, uh, so you know, in uh, my Karst VR piece, uh, you started out in a cave structure, uh, and that actually was really relevant to uh, m one of my personal experience as a four-year-old, I think it was the first time I went into one of those caves uh, where I was really freaked out uh, by the concept of a cave right in front of me that it have came you know, so many thousands of years before me, and now, uh, you know, I'm in it, and if uh, any rock were to fall, like, I will immediately die <laughs> right there, right? <laughs> uh, so I think that was really my uh, subliminal experience looking back, right, after I uh, learned more about uh, our history, uh, learned more about uh, concept relating to that. Um, and so, so then I really wanted to recreate this experience in VR, right? So, uh, so not only you are uh, entering into this cave structure through my work, uh, you are also entering into my experience as a four-year-old relating to the you know terror of that. Um, this very piece we are looking at in front uh, is one of the more unique piece uh, from the show. Uh, this is actually one of the earlier piece uh, made by uh, made by me three years ago. Uh, so it's called Pool. Uh, you are looking at a structure uh, where an image of a pool is uh, put inside of the box. Um, so the digital uh, space is extending the physical space, uh, which is this uh, structure that you are looking into, uh, and then. And uh, throughout 12 minutes, uh, you are seeing different simulation of the swimming pool. Um, so, you know, everybody's experience is a little bit different, too. Uh, depends on when you come and uh, look at the show as well. Um, and then now we're back uh, at the, the front uh, space again. Uh, I also want to just, uh, you know, uh, mention that this show uh, is set up in uh the Chinatown of, uh, of uh, Manhattan. Um, I loved uh, the fact that the show was able to uh, happen there, right? Uh, I mentioned that coming from a painter's background, um, there's actually a lot of similar concept that I uh, already see and borrow from Chinese painting, Chinese scroll painting, uh, that has to do with, you know, some of the works that I'm, I'm showing here. And I also, you know, love in a way that uh, I'm able to kind of showcasing that in uh, a specific, uh, you know, neighborhood um, where, uh, you know, not only, uh, you know, people from my uh, culture can come and experience this, uh, but others can as well. Uh, so this is a little excerpt from the opening scene uh, where, 
the person in the white uh, shirt is uh, Miao, who is the artist occupying the space downstairs. And uh, the person who is in the red shirt, uh, that's Frank, uh, who is the other artist who is occupying the, um, the space on top. So uh, another aspect of the show, I was really enjoying the fact that not only I can showcase my work, but I can also uh, be a facilitator and showcase uh, their work as well, uh, which uh, has really interesting relationship to, to, my, uh, to my show. Um, as well so yeah <laughs> wow that was a beautiful tour <laughs> thank you we can we can go back and look through some of the uh, specific works um, if you want but also just uh, commenting on we on what we just saw um, and if anyone had uh, comments or question please do send them through um, so yeah thank you so much for uh, telling us about the idea of the show and uh, um, and the different pieces that you had. I was, um, there were two elements that really took my attention. One was the fact that um, there was a lot of fluidity in the works. So the first few works we saw uh, when the body is sort of taking the form of something else and then re-emerging into the body, it really makes me think about how fragile we are, especially now. And the fact that we are, um, you know, made out of small things that we don't see and we don't really perceive it. Um, so that really, you know, allow me to reflect on, on, um, on the nature of the virus as well. You know, the fact that these little drops, invisible drops that we don't even see may get into a body and then transform into something else and take on a new life. Um, how, how your experience or, um, you know, your um, ideas sort of wrapped around the concept of the fluidity of the body and how did you create that specific work? Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. Uh, so I utilize uh, what is called the fluid simulation uh, mm -hmm. in technology to create a lot of those works. Um, and uh, in the mainstream media, you you actually probably did a lot of it already. So uh, in commercial settings, uh, you know, things even like a Coca-Cola ad uh, oftentimes are made uh, from the software, right? So. Uh, so the the benefit of using the software is that you can uh, have a sense of control, right? Like you can uh, make the fluid do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then, you know, not, not to mention, of course, in film and uh, TV, uh, a lot of the ocean, a lot of the uh, the fluid is also done by uh, software like RealFlow. Um, so so uh, I personally really enjoy working with RealFlow. Uh, it's uh, it makes me feel really powerful, uh, and I think that's part of the thing that um, you know working with digital media um, is really appealing to a young generation of artists. Uh, is that uh, you know uh, this very advanced tool that is is made? Uh, if as a painter formally I were to uh, you know convey this idea of ocean, right? That's uh, a different. Mm -hmm way to uh, produce imagery uh, where, uh, you know, in uh, fluid simulation software, uh, it's actually a lot easier to uh, generate uh, millions of drops uh, and then, uh, you know, kind of orchestrate them together to make, uh, to make images. Um, and then, you know, uh, the, the concept of water itself is also really fascinating to me. Um, and my name is Snow. <laughs> And so uh, I think, uh, you know, in a sense, I'm always really aware of uh, kind of like uh, how environment uh, is uh, so crucial to our existence and how, you know, everybody is really part of it, right? Um, and uh, even that kind of blurry line between what is nature, what is culture, right? Uh, I think it's kind of even uh, more interesting to push in a sense of CG uh, simulation. Uh, and, you know, small little things, uh, composes of uh, 
uh, entity, right? I mean, that is how we think uh, of human. Um, and so, so, you know, in the CG technology, I wanted to kind of deconstruct that, right? Like again, like almost mimicking uh, the way that physical materials are being made, uh, how, you know, many millions of water molecules there are in us. Um, and mm -hmm. that's similar when you think about, uh, you know, the ocean, right, of course, uh, and even uh, one of the, one of the cave structure cast, uh the the uh the the stone actually look a lot like water too uh because they are actually formed by uh thousands of years uh water accumulating uh through droplets right with the salt uh and uh you know other compositions and uh and so you know essentially it all has to do with water and um the second thing in cars we didn't get a chance to see uh is actually a glacier site uh and that has to do with when i visited a glacier site in Canada about two summers ago. Um, and then, you know, how majestic it is, right, of course, but also, uh, again, how much uh, I realized it's really uh, disappearing, right, right in front mm -hmm. of eyes. Um, and, and that just make me kind of think about uh, human, think about who we are in a longer time scale, right? Um, you know, we oftentimes, you know, refer to ourselves uh, maybe just a few decades. Um, but many, many things have existed long before us and will hopefully exist long past us, right? Um, and I also uh, tie back to the first body of the work, uh, you know, this kind of funny saying uh, people like to say uh, is, you know, we're all once stardust right so um i think you know that just kind of goes further to say uh this very um kind of important and tight uh relationship that uh, human being has with uh the rest of the world um and and that we're not you know necessarily really in the center uh we're actually you know really kind of a small component part of the world although you know we have our importance um but i think um that needs to be viewed uh in the balance um of of kind of the larger scale right both in time and space so yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I think what you just said, you know, it takes into account the fact that different cultures um, and different times, you know, in history have put human at um, the center of the universe, you know. Um, or, as you just said, you know, I think we started to realize how small we are. Um, of course, we all have a role within this system that we live in, but in a way, we are um, one element, one part. And I think, you know, this is what really, um, yeah, I, 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 I really got um, taken by this concept of fluidity and how the body is fluid. And... Um, you know, different human beings breathing on different parts of the earth still are very much connected. Um, so that's, that's what I got from browsing through the show today. Um, and also the, the myth of the cave, Plato's cave. Um, I feel that the way you played with the uh, VR, um, it really um, helped to understand that what we're seeing through a glass, um, it may just be a perception. So that even the world in VR, um, it can be even more real than reality itself. It's only what you believe is real that plays with your mind, you know, and um, that was really fascinating. How did you think of the show when um, taking the works into the space? Did you have an idea about um, the space before installing the show? Or was the, 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 the physicality of the space being adapted to the works that you were displaying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good question. I'm just going to pull out the... Uh video of my uh virtual space again uh, yeah so uh because i think it will be helpful uh to see mm -hmm. it uh, when i talk about it so uh so to uh it 
uh, you're absolutely right. It's actually really crucial uh, for my work uh, to be seen in a particular way uh, in a space because, you know, uh, you know, as somebody who works in digital media, uh, very soon I find uh, that I just keep wanting to bring this image back uh, into a physical space. Um, and and so, uh, so, you know, before I actually... Uh, was able to decide like which work goes to where. I'll play this uh, again for some of you guys who just uh, maybe joined us. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a 3D simulation uh, of the space, uh, of the physical space that the show is in. Um, so yeah, so I uh, I actually had to study the space first uh, uh, in a in a digital space, right? So mm -hmm. I'm I'm using it kind of as as the this way uh, of this mirror. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, I kind of um, think of the space as this uh, uh, lobby when you first come in and then this hallway with corridor space um, in the middle. And then uh, at the, the final is the uh, kind of like final um, room. And uh, this space was actually formerly a mall. <laughs> that is also why uh, it's very unique uh, the, way, the way it is. Uh, so, so when I decided on the artwork, um, because the lobby space is the biggest, so I put uh, the four series, uh, the four, four works from the same uh, Galaxy series there, right? So once you uh, come into the space, um, you uh, spatially are experiencing a more kind of open uh, openness. Um, and then um, you start to think about concept of uh, the universe, right? Uh, and, and then and then as you go into the hallway, you're actually feeling more and more narrowed um, by the space. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the reason why I'm showing you without some of the side walls is because it would be really hard to show wisdom in it, right? So you're 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 actually kind of uh, feeling feeling a little bit trapped in the space. Um, but then the funny funny effect kind of uh, happens in reverse uh, because then all of the projection becomes portals, and mm -hmm. so. And the open windows for you uh, in there, right? So, uh, so people kind of start to really pay pay attention uh, to to those images as well. Um, uh, I'm also pulling up just a few more uh, images from the from the the show's documentation uh, here too, uh, so you can kind of like see. Uh, and and it, it's really uh, it's really interesting because you know majority of the work that I have put in there are. Um, you know, projections or monitor displays. And so they're all very digital, uh, but with cars, I actually was able to print them out. Um, so, so, you know, uh, you know, with it being a steel image, uh, this is probably one of the work that feels the most concrete, right? Um, that is not moving, uh, that is, you know, uh, actually kind of just there. So you have a very different experience uh, relating to this piece uh, versus the other piece. And of course, uh, another piece uh, where you have a different uh, kind of experience with time is also pool, right? Because again, it kind of has a physical uh, presence uh, there there as well um so so i wanted to put you know pool right before you uh encounter uh the two vr piece uh where you're mm -hmm. into uh into the, the the digital so so the whole show uh from the start uh to the end uh you know invites you uh into a physical space and then as uh, the physical space gets narrowed and narrow uh, uh, narrower and narrower uh, the the grandness of the digital space opens up right and it, it ended in um, the 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 last room right which is this VR piece uh, where you you're actually the most limited physically because you're in a hazard uh, but visually uh, you're you're most uh, sort of free right because you can see this 360 60 degree uh, image so yeah. brilliant thank you for sharing these images with us um, I think they really give us a sense of what the show looks like in the physical space thank I, you yeah that really beautiful um I also wanted to ask you how did you feel yourself as an artist came out um of this show in terms of like you experience it as well within the physical space, the physical constraints. And how did you feel about referring back to the myth of the cave and in Plato's, um, uh, 
how did you feel the the exhibition played a role on your way of seeing the world now you know what's your view on what we are currently experiencing given that the whole show gives this metaphor of entering through um, a space where you're like in a cave and so what you see it may be real and maybe not so you're just left with your thoughts to sort of navigate that space and try and understand where reality is you know um Plato's work was was referring to shadows that were projected on the wall and so people on the other side they were thinking um you know that was the real world but then when they go out and see the light um they are somehow afraid and they don't believe it um they don't believe in what they're seeing so they go back into the cave because that was the real world so given the um fiction reality let's say of the digital art um compared to the to the physicality of the space entering into your show and coming out afterwards what's that what was the feeling that you as an artist and the creator of the show experienced and what do you think others experienced mm. yeah thank you for that really good question uh i So something I've been thinking a lot about relating to our current time and the concept of our of my show. Uh in early on we talk about, you know, liminal spaces, this in between space where uh you know it, it's 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 a transition, right? So it's um it's a uh, it's a word that used to identify uh something that is not where it come from and it's also not yet what it will be, right? So mm -hmm. um and so 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 i you know in a way you can think that the the you know we're we're constantly in liminal spaces uh i mean maybe life itself is is a liminal you know experience uh because uh and it's it's this kind of main liminal experience that is also composed of many many small you know transitions um you know even as simple as when you maybe move from a city to another right that's a liminal mm -hmm. experience or you know uh sometimes people will say like oh uh you know thinking about the the person who I was in, when I was in 20s you know that was really different than you know the person you know I am now right so um so 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 you know i i think like um in our society um and uh maybe especially uh you know uh coming from china and then being in the states for about 10 decades uh, a a real sort of uh uh differences that i i i kind of experience is uh you know uh like you know th this kind of concept of you either you always have to be something right like there is this kind of urging society where like you either have to be uh you know agreeing with this or disagreeing with this or you know mm -hmm. this is a party situation so you're you're either one or the other uh so there's a lot of value that is being put uh in like uh the the uh you know being in one or the other but a lot less emphasis on uh being in the middle um i think like also as a as a teacher uh i am uh, interested in the middle uh, a lot more because you know i think that's where a lot of critical thinking happens yeah absolutely uh, i agree examinations of uh you know why this is good why this is not good uh and uh you know before we have maybe made the final conclusion uh let's value them all right so um so uh in the lemonoid i uh, go back to the idea of the the show lemonoid is more playful right lemonoid is a concept where there's not really as much a stake uh you know it's uh it, it's like game right it's it's a game um and sometimes actually it become this uh escape right <laughs> that many mm -hmm. people uh kind of need nowadays is like i see so much on the news that i need to go play uh you know a minecraft <laughs> and see like beautifulness beautiful simulations uh in 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 the game and so so you know that this like limit limonoid space um used to be play used to be uh kind of you know fun and then it help us to uh to sort of uh you know uh be ready to go back to the reality uh but 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 you know with with as all being stuck at home uh a lot of the playful liminoid space uh um 
on the digital uh, uh, internet actually become more and more like the no space. So, so you know, it is really where uh, actually a lot of the communication happens now, right? Like, uh, unless it's somebody who lived in an immediate, uh, you know, space with you, if you want to talk to anybody else, you have to go through platform. Um, mm -hmm. So, I think we're all transitioning right in this in this in this process uh, even more so right i mean this is no, this is nothing new i think uh, especially with technological advancement or you know events in history uh human being have always have to learn to adapt right we're always mm -hmm. from one to the other but i think uh, i think now um it feels very intensified because uh, because we all have to do it, <laughs> and uh, and nobody really knows. I mean, in a way, uh, nobody really knows what what is gonna gonna all look like, right? Um, and so we're uh, so I think there's sort of this angst uh, collectively that that we're we're, we're having. Uh, but but maybe my encouragement and also kind of throughout this show is like, you know, this process itself doesn't have to be. A frustrating process like you know while I think uh, the hope of establishing some sort of status is great right and I'm sure we're all figuring it out but I think mm -hmm. the process of uh, you know figuring out is just as beautiful well and scary right at the same time um, and uh, and you know that's uh, yeah that's kind of where I um, I want to kind of like dwell right on a little bit more yeah well, thank you. That was such a beautiful explanation. And, um, you know, it, it really um, communicates the, the view you have on what's currently happening and the art that you make and, and how this is in constant communication with the world. Um, so acknowledging what's happening and having that as a reflection on the virtual world really makes sense um, and I think it really does connect us all um, given that we're currently all using online platforms to to stay in touch with each other so um, it was extremely relevant thank you so much for sharing uh, the tour um, it was brilliant and I think you know going forward we we'll probably will see more and more of these uh, new ways of exhibiting art um, uh, and perceiving art. So I found it very fascinating. Thank you very much. And uh, I can see the people watching as well. They've been enjoying it. So th thank you for everyone who's been watching and sharing this with us. Um, if you do have questions, please do send them through. Uh, we'll, we'll message you back and uh, happy to, to continue the conversation. But yes. Thank you. It's been really lovely to, to meet you and to go through the show with you. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. And uh, I maybe I'll just uh, last comment. I love, of I, course. I love that uh, in a sense that we, we're actually all, you know, not only dwelling on this process, but also we're actually all pushed to be more creative. Um, yeah, so absolutely. Even the fact that, you know, the uh, I love the fact that you're doing, uh, you know, the online talks uh, so that uh, with the last ideal situation, you know, we can still have very meaningful things happening, right? So I think mm -hmm. as, a, as a human being, uh, we will also, you know, utilize, utilize this uh, last ideal time for that, right? So I think that's mm -hmm. kind of like side of, of everything and thank you all for joining in online feel free to you know send, send me more uh questions online uh i'm i'm here uh, and, uh <laughs> yeah thank you everyone watching and uh do reach out if you have questions it'll be lovely to carry on the conversation and yes on on that point i think that the limits that we're currently experiencing uh given the situation they're really pushing uh most of us uh, to discover new ways of um, being creative um, and and be in a way even more human, you yeah, know. I think so. I think so. You know, it really connects us all. I think you know the hu humanity in us in this kind of funny time gets highlighted, right? Like we're mm -hmm. all really a lot more similar than we are different. Yeah, it brings down all the barriers that we are. Yeah, you know, that's... we tend to build. Um, and, and art is yet one of the best way of communicating through 
um, the emotions that we all experience um, as human beings. Um, so that was that was really wonderful to have the privilege of experiencing this show, you know, that is in New York, of course, is no ideal, but it's a great way of still being able to share it. So thank you so much for giving us that opportunity. So it's been wonderful. And thank you everyone watching. Okay. Take care. You too. Bye everyone.